Warmly welcome to the next VVSC alumni seminar. Uh, today we will hear from one of our actually over 70 uh, graduated PhDs from VVSC by now. Uh, today we have Kaisa Markstedt here. Uh, who was a PhD student in the first batch, you could say, or second no, second batch, batch. I think second was. batch. Yes. Uh, and uh, of course, from uh, Chalmers, but now you're living in Stockholm. Yes. Uh, so that was also convenient. So you will be here in uh, in, in the room with us. Uh, but we also have some participants online, uh, of course. Uh, and of course, we have some people in the room as well. Warmly welcome. Uh, <laughs> I don't think I would say so much more because I think you you can uh, tell us about what you have done. And yeah. uh, of course, this is uh, hopefully this can be an interactive session. So please, uh, if you have questions, I, I, it's both yeah, yeah, throughout welcome. or after or mm -hmm. or so. And those guys who are on the online, please uh, just uh, raise your hand and then uh, we will make sure that you can uh, also uh, ask your questions. All right. Yes. I give the word to Kaisa. Great. Thank you. And. Uh... I'm uh, I'm sorry I was a bit late in, but uh, yeah, it's icy out, <laughs> so <laughs> better safe. Um, Definitely. So yes, my name is Kaisa Markstedt, and uh, I was part of VVSC around 2014 to 2018. Um, and uh, yeah, I thought I will share a bit the the path I have taken so far. And uh, I was thinking I'll start just where I am to today. Um, so let's see. Maybe I have to point somewhere else. Oh, it's this computer. It's this. It, no, 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 it works. Ah, I had to press down and not up. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, so today I am at IVLs, the Swedish Environmental Institute, which is a research institute working with a wide range of environmental and sustainability issues um, very broadly. And there I have a role as research coordinator. So this is a kind of central role at the Institute where I help out with and support with a lot of different questions connecting to the research done at IVL. So basically I'm a support for the researchers there. and. IVL works both um, with assignments for different companies, um, but also research projects. So it's kind of 50 50. Um, so there I can, th things I support on can be questions regarding financing structures. Uh, where are there different calls that you can uh, uh, apply for as a researcher from IVL? Um, but also administering uh, the some stately funded money that IVL gets for research and uh, together with um, with the head of the the board at IVL then we um, discuss the projects and where this money can go um, at IVL and uh, then also I participate in different networking activities so for example we have a partnership with KTH where I sit on on that board and discuss how can we create um, more communication between IVL and KTH and create projects together or um, have researchers start working at the IVL or the other way around. And uh, this is, uh, I, I enjoy being in a very networking role. I get to come into contact with basically all the researchers at IVL and uh, get an insight in, in many different types of projects. And also I get some skills in project management and get to be uh, also leading some projects uh, where I also get experience in, for example, some EU projects. Uh, so that is also uh, all new for me. So I have been at IVL since August only. So this is quite a new new role and very different from where I, where I was earlier on in my path. So if we go back and just look at my, my timeline, what have I been doing since my PhD within VVSC? So I, I think I will stand over here if you follow with the camera. Um, so I finished my PhD in June, 2018. 
And after that, I started working as a product development engineer at Billerud, then called Biller Korsnes. And this was in Örebro. And uh, after a few years as working in the product development group, I, uh, there I got very much in contact with also closer to the production and the processing units and thought it would be interesting to, to understand how you work even closer to the daily processing questions, the daily questions in the factory. So then uh, I uh, was working for a, about a year as quality engineer. Um, but then I, I felt like, oh, I miss a bit the research community and uh, yeah, that, that life there. So I kind of also maybe, I don't know, these pandemic years and like you want something to happen in your life. Um, so then I found IVL and I hadn't known that much about them before. Um, it is a bit of a different field than the research, material research area where I came from, from previously working with wood materials. So um, this kind of popped up and I applied and then now I'm, I'm here and I'm back in Stockholm. I'm originally from Stockholm. So um, my path have has taken me from Stockholm to Gothenburg at, Chal at Chalmers and then to Örebro where I was working at Billerud and then now Stockholm just down the road. Um, yes, but uh, I thought I'd go dive into a bit more my roles at Biller Korsnes also uh, to give you the perspective of how was it working in the industry environment. And uh, yeah, feel free to break up with questions also. Oh yeah, I just wanted to add it this slide because I'm thinking a lot of you are maybe in the VVSC um, doctoral school. And uh, I think this I have with me still, um, the collaborative projects, the friends, I see Pat here sits, sitting in the room, we know each other, He's, he should be in this picture, yeah, at the back there. Um, also this network, so both when I've been at Spiller Korsnes, but also now when I'm at IVL, these people from this network show up and pop up in different places. Uh, and then it's it's very nice seeing, seeing each other again and being able to connect and also work together in different ways. And also just a bit, then if we look at where, where was I during the VVSC time? So I was working with a project on 3D printing wood tissue. So to summarize that very shortly, I worked on establishing a new technology platform for assembly of wood biopolymers, where I worked with control of design, composition, structure, and material properties. So I was working a lot with non-cellulose, alginates, and then connecting the material properties to this new 3D printing technology, which I think there weren't that many working with the 3D printers when I started, but now it's used in a lot of ways in prototyping and showing all the different possibilities with materials. And I took a lot of inspiration from how the wood is built up and the structure of the wood, um, understanding that and connecting it to new technology. And uh, that I kind of had with me in my thoughts, then working, going over to, to working in industry where at Billy Koshnes is a paper packaging company. So still I had these application ideas in the 3D printing world. We were thinking about, oh, 3D packaging. What if we build up everything from 3D or like, can we, it, it was still this, how do we go from thinking of materials in a two-dimensional production way into a three-dimensional production way? But uh, then working in the in a big paper board factory, it became quite two-dimensional two again. Uh, so I basically changed from working with this 
small scale uh, machine, the three D printer, um, to then uh, working with the big scale, uh, the paperboard um, machine, and uh, this I did also with a move from Gothenburg to Örebro. And I thought this was very, very exciting coming from, have been working very focused on one project um, where you're very involved with your, with your own project and your own goals. And, uh, and then coming to this where the goals are kind of set outside of your control. And there are certain products, uh, customer needs to connect to and understand. And also this thing of having a big machine to always take into account. Um, there is already a big infrastructure that um, cannot be changed in, in one day. Um, but I learned, I learned a lot and also just changing this scenery and the city was exciting. Uh, I don't know how many of you have been to Örebro, or maybe you've had the chance to do a site visit to Fravi. Um, but uh, basically, Fravi is 45 minutes outside of Örebro city. Uh, so it's not that far if you compare to how long it takes to get around in Stockholm. Um, and I enjoyed Örebro a lot. It was a very nice city to, to live in. And uh, you can really have the city life and then you work out in the countryside. Um, and then coming to industry, um, that, that transfer was not, I didn't experience it as uh, so difficult. I really took on the challenge and I was excited to see a different type of organization, a different type of environment. Uh, and uh, at the same time, it had a connection to my PhD. I quickly got involved in a project where they were starting to implement um, a type of MFC, you can say, microfibrillated cellulose, but on the industry scale. So not in the way that we work with nanocellulosis, um, nanocellulose materials here in, uh, in the lab. But a more finer, finer pulp. And that I got to be involved in how to introduce that into the process. And uh, it was nice being able to come then with my, my knowledge from knowing a lot about these type of materials and uh, then thinking a bit extra where, when we then analyze the results of using it in different areas of the board, what does that mean? What are we seeing? Um, but this was still, it was the product development um, unit. So uh, they have at Bilir Koshnas at that time, they had separated the research unit and the product development uh, unit, or they call it innovation and development. So um, it was a lot of hands-on on improving the products that, that were already um, being used. Um, but I also learned a lot of project management skills, got to be in projects with many different people. Also just being in a non-academic environment, learning how do I interact, how do I communicate with these type of people that maybe don't have that type of academic background that I have, and still being able to get them interested into the projects uh, and also listening to them because they have also a lot of knowledge from this process, from the how it actually works on the on the machine. And uh, yeah, so I think the, there was both a lot that I had with me um, into working here, and then like. I mean, you have a lot of time management skill after doing your PhD. You're very independent, self-going, can plan. I often got feedback, oh, you're so structured and organized. And may maybe I am, but I also am maybe because I've been taught to, to be able to handle those things on, on your own. Um, 
yeah and then also exciting to just run big trials on on these machines and they can take like several hours and you don't know when they're going to start because you have to have the right conditions on the machine so you're you're always like ready to go and look, nope we can't do it we'll do it tomorrow <laughs> like so you have to be very flexible in in this environment also maybe more than than i would have expected before and still it's working in the um at the board machine or in the forest industry we're still working with this natural material where there are many changes differences in the raw material all the time um that control is in there's certain control of the material but depending on which wood comes into the factory then the process has to adapt all the time and um that was also very exciting and also difficult <laughs> to handle. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then after some years, then as I said, I I got in this work. I was working very closely to the production unit. Um, my office was basically in the same house as the board machine, so I also got um, was very, working very closely with the processing engineers there and. Um, and also the quality department. So they invited me to, to try out working even closer to the processing unit and um, then uh, working as a quality engineer. And that role uh, also, I, I got a lot of new experiences. Uh, I got to work more closely with customers, our customers and understand what information do they need to understand the product and also be able to uh, evaluate it um, and also i was working with a lot of these processes of uh, root cause analysis finding what are the problems in the processes that are affecting the quality so you got to play a bit detective um, it turned up spots on the cardboard and then okay what is this coming from um how do we find where this is happening in the board machine is it already in the pulping stage or is it in the wet end of the board machine or the dry end so um yeah very active you both got to sit and analyze at your computer but then also run out and try to look at the machine and understand the material and, and such. And also working in the industry, that also reminds me of how I, how I came in here and said, yeah, it was quite icy and safety first. Um, working in this environment, you, you really learn that way of thinking um, because uh, there are a lot of, unfortunately, there are still accidents that happen. And when they happen, they can be, quite severe so and I, yeah that's a good good thinking to have in your but um in the back of your head that I didn't either think about that I would learn those type of uh, ways of thinking and yeah so to summarize a bit on that part so coming into as a, as a development engineer I got these skills of working with large-scale trials also understanding more the pure paperboard per properties because i had been working a lot with how do we use nanocellulose in new types of applications um and then this whole lifestyle of working at at the industry and the people that you interact and work with there and then moving on as a quality engineer i got to develop my problem solving methodology and uh, these steps in how you how you work with root cause analysis, as I mentioned, but also how the factory is run at a daily basis, daily quality control. What is, uh, and that is, I like this mix of having something happening all the time, but then also be able to work with projects that took a longer time and have a more future focused um, problem solving thinking. So, and then also the customer needs and getting closer to, to working with them. Uh, very exciting. 
And then now then, as a research coordinator, I think working here, there were a lot of different possibilities to uh, continue working in the, um, in the paperboard industry. But uh, as I said, I wanted a bit different change of lifestyle. And uh, here I see now I'm getting new skills in networking or using those skills more, I would say, because I, I have always liked the networking part, but you need to be in an environment, in an environment where you get that possibility. And then uh, working with more strategic development. So we have a lot of discussions, okay, where, how do we help the research to develop in the way we want at IVL? Are the new strategic areas that we should lift up in some different, some ways so that and what uh, support do they need then to to start to flourish um so i and i i like those strategic discussions also working with eu projects how how is that built up um how do you partner with other uh, researchers from different countries um more involved in like project management in the classical sense of uh, actually having a dedicated role as a project leader and uh, needing to um, work, manage time and resources and budget. And then uh, also more understanding for research financing in connected them to IVL, of course. And uh, yeah, so that that is kind of where where I have, uh, gone since my PhD and uh, I didn't expect this um, for uh, what was it there in 2018 or when I started my PhD and uh, I'm very open to to what will be next I mean I'm quite new now at IVL but uh, things things change and uh, things pop up that you want to do so yeah uh, so I think I will finish there thank you Thank you very much. Do we have uh, questions in the room? I don't see any questions online. Somebody has a question? Yes. Hey, Monica. <laughs> hey, Kaisa, nice to meet you again. Yeah. Oh, very interesting to see how your career after your defense has been. Very exciting. Uh, how was it to be a PhD in in VVSC? You have learned a lot about these more soft skills after. Were there some courses already in VVSC at that time? Um, yeah, or we had soft skills, I think, were part of more the Chalmers PhD program. Mm. Um, there they had quite a lot of there were like different project management courses you had to take or teaching is also a soft skill that's included. Mm -hmm. Another question is, how is it to come as a PhD to industry and be out in the production? Yeah, it's... I don't think there are so many or how was it at uh, yeah. Frövi? There are not so many and many people in the production also have... They're processing engineers, but not from an academic background. They have worked there a long time and know that's that system there. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think what I brought was having a more um, long sighted and thinking, yeah, more long term perspective on the different problems or issues. Like they they work on the daily issue a lot and get stuck there and then but it was uh, that i felt they appreciated um but then uh, then uh, this thing of that there aren't that many with a phd background so uh, in the research and development units there are mm -hmm. and there it was more yeah a similar background as me or closer um and I also had the opportunity to be involved in some, they had like different competence areas where they met and discussed, for example, 
um, modification of cellulose or well, yeah, chemical modification. Um, I also got to um, to to be a representative of the company when we had meetings with other research uh, collaborators sometimes. Um, so I thought they took use in a way of it, but also on, at a day-to-day -day basis, it wasn't like something you discussed. It, it didn't help, like, it didn't tell them anything by saying that you had a PhD. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't frowned upon. It, I didn't feel that I got like, oh, you are a PhD, what are you saying? Um, which maybe like a comic could say, mm -hmm. but... Um, I, uh, but I felt maybe it's, even if I, even if I say I have been uh, working as a researcher, I have been, um, done my doctoral studies, that they didn't, uh, like, it doesn't really, um, yeah, it's like, okay, but what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Kaisa. But I, I felt I was very appreciated, like, mm -hmm. it's, um. The, the knowledge I, I came in with and that's yeah that's great any other questions now I don't see do you see if there are any right mm. so yeah. maybe I can ask you so uh, following up on Monica's question so I know that uh, quite many are thinking of going into the industry and I mean you were really in the production so you were really in the forest products industry after your PhD and I mean you you did your PhD in in Chalmers on a I mean it was more it was not so applied it was no. more a fundamental uh, project you could say uh, so um, what sort of what what I mean could you have uh, prepared yourself uh, in a good way or, or okay let's say like this what are the activities within VVS or, or within your PhD studies that was best for your continuation in the industry so to say um, and what would you like to have more of yeah I think part of like now I chose to go into the industry that is anyway quite close to uh, VVSC or wood-based materials and uh, so so there just just having that of uh, like in the in the VVSC program where we had also more general knowledge of the of the field and um, that helped me that um that I I had gone been to some site visits to the industry that you have met anyway some people working in that um in, yeah in that area that you it's yeah both the material is not new to you and then uh, that you you know about the companies and you know about the the type of places that yeah. that work in in the industry um if i would have gone to a different field of industry and it wouldn't have been connected to wood-based materials um that would probably have been more difficult because then it would have been difficult to see what what am I using for knowledge for my PhD in this role here um, now I could very quickly get into discussions with people who had worked there a long time because I knew the material um, but uh, yeah I think what I always what I maybe have would have wanted, I don't know specifically from the, maybe not from the VVSC program, maybe more from my engineering uh, studies, uh, would have been nice with a longer, longer practical work mm -hmm. at some site. Mm -hmm. um, I think my my first like experience actually working in an industry facility was when I started there in in 2018, and then I had been studying for 10 years. Um, site visits are are very good, but you don't yeah. you don't see the your day to day work. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any anyone else? <laughs> yeah, I will come. <laughs> uh, okay. 
Thank you very much, Kaisa. It's really great having you back in in the VVSC setting. Mm. Uh, it's it's uh, it's always nice to hear where you're going, and I hope you keep us updated on yeah, your I'm continuation. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very very much. It was great having you Thank here. You. Mm. Yes, and I will also say that uh, we will hopefully come back with uh, more VVSC alumni seminars soon, and uh, hopefully in this setting where you can participate at KTH or uh, on Zoom as well. Thank you so much for today. <laughs>